Hey, how are you liking the look of the new old studio? You know, with the studio move and everything going on, this is the third time that I've tried to record this video. But, you know what they say, third time's the charm. Originally, this was gonna be more of a vlog style video, but since everything is already printed and the results are in, let's do a recap of what worked, what didn't, when it comes to printing fast. And the two things that I tried was printing fast using a tuned profile and stock hardware. And the other approach was printing fast using a drill out nozzle. Where's the big boy? There it is, 1.5 millimeters. So this is what all the cool kids seem to be doing today, um, drilling out nozzles and then printing parts with nice thick visible layers. So I wanted to see if that actually gives you an advantage in print speed and not just in linear speed and, and extrusion rate, but actually getting parts out faster versus using a profile that is using speeds and accelerations that really push the printer hardware to its limits. And these are the results right here. So my first thought was, well, of course, you're gonna be printing 3D benches. Everyone knows the model, everyone's printed one, everyone knows how fast those typically print. So my baseline for this was using the 0.2 millimeter layer height on the Mark III, not the Mark S, using the standard speed setting. And that is, which one is it? This Benchy right here. And this one is looking really good. It's 0.2 millimeter layers, so it's a bit coarser than the 0.15 that you typically see, but it's a good looking Benchy. And this took one hour and 33 minutes. So the first most obvious test is just going to the printer and cranking up the speed override. So what this does is whenever the G code, your sliced file requests, say 50 millimeters a second in linear speed, the printer tries to get to 100. So it's doubling the maximum speed for every single move. Now that print also printed fairly well. This is the 200% one and it took one hour and 11 minutes. Now, one hour and 11 minutes isn't that much faster than one hour and 33 minutes. In fact, at the end of the day, it almost makes no difference at all whether you're taking you know, one and a half or one and a quarter hours. But what you can already see is that there is a lot of curling going on in the bow of this Benchy where the cooling was insufficient. Now, why did this 200% speed Benchy not print twice as fast as the 100% one. So the limitation is accelerations because what you're setting with a 200% speed override is just the maximum speed the printer tries to get to. But if it has short moves as you know most printer moves are, it will spend a good amount of that move first ramping up to speed and then holding that max speed for a bit and then ramping back down. So that's something that we also need to increase and that's not being increased by the speed multiplier, which is why you're not seeing all that much of an improvement right there. So that is exactly what I tried to do with these two benches. And these were still printed with the same info ratio, with the same amount of perimeters, top solid layers, bottom solid layers. So on the surface, on the mechanical side, these should be identical to the stock 100% benchy. But of course, they did print faster now that we have higher accelerations. And these did increase the print speed. This one took 59 minutes and this one took 47 minutes. But of course, as you can see, they don't look all that great. And that is because of cooling limitations like I just mentioned. Now, as it turns out on the Mark III, the part cooling fan, especially the old fan shroud that has like that sharp 90 degree bend, the new ones have the fan sticking out at 45 degrees. Uh, this old design does not provide a ton of cooling past what the stock profiles are meant to use. So they're fine for, you know, what Pusha are supplying in their slicer, but as soon as you push it, it runs out of cooling potential. Now that is compounded with the fact that because this is not a volcano heater block, which is longer and gives the filament more time to melt, to maintain that print speed, we need to increase the temperature ever so slightly. Like I think I went up to 220 degrees or something up from 210. And that also introduces more heat into the part. So originally I thought that the extruder and hardened were gonna be the factors on this printer that would limit me to how fast I can print. But I kept cranking up just linear feed rates and, and accelerations to a point where I was seriously uncomfortable but the limiting factor always turned out to be cooling. So I needed a new model that was a bit bigger so that I wouldn't have to slow down for minimum layer time. And that, as you can see, is the Foxy by our favorite designer, Luby. So by default, this Foxy model is actually taking up most of the build plate on the Prusa, which is like, a day of printing, but I didn't have that much time to print all these samples. So I scaled it down to 42% and that allowed me to have a decent layer time so it wouldn't overheat, but still give me a good model that would show the differences between all these different approaches. <clears throat> Honeybush. <sighs> LTTstore.com. 
So here's our baseline again using the stock 0.2 millimeter speed setting on the Mark III. And this took two hours and 52 minutes and it looks great. By the way, this filament is dust filament PLA black. I have them on the big two and a half with 2.8 kilogram spools. It prints great. It's a regular grade of NatureWorks PLA. So it's not some funky PLA plus. And I think this is very representative of what a typical PLA is going to give you. And for these, I skipped just cranking up the speed on the printer itself and went straight to my hand tuned profiles. So this is the first one that's based on my speed profile. And that profile is based on the 0.2 millimeter speed profile that's included with Prusa Sisa for the Mark III but we have increased the perimeter and infill speeds to 250 millimeters a second max. And that is up from, I think, somewhere around 60. And we have increased the accelerations to 2,500 for perimeters and 4,000 millimeters per second for everything else, basically. And that is up from 800 and 1,200. So we have more than tripled our maximum speeds and our acceleration. So this one is printed in one hour, 43 minutes, and that's a bit over half the time of what the stock print does. And it looks, it looks a bit rougher, but it's still surprisingly good for being printed that fast. And remember, I didn't turn down infill. This is still the same amount of material, same amount of strength, just the visual quality is a bit degraded. So what you can see with these models, and this is the one where I increased accelerations even more and enabled the features where the infill of two consecutive layers is combined into one. So it's only printing infill on every second layer. Now what you can see on both of these is that the print is matte. So the stock one is pretty glossy, but these two are fairly matte. Now I did increase the temperature on these. I was using 220 degrees Celsius, but apparently because the print is still matte, that was not enough heat to get the filament to the same temperature when it leaves the nozzle as with the stock print where it had a bit more time to dwell in that heated area. So if absolute print quality isn't the top of your priority but you still want you know a decent layer height this is I think the fastest you'll want to go and this is one hour and 11 minutes down from two hours and 52 minutes. So that is quite a bit of time saved for using a non-modified stock printer. So there is one more that I did with the stock 0.4 millimeter nozzle and that is this one. And this is the one that I'm calling O3C, Compromise. So what this is, is basically on its internal, it's using faster speeds for internal perimeters, the combined infill feature, crazy accelerations and all that. But on the external perimeter, we are dialing that way down to, well, it's still quite a bit faster than the stock profile uses, but you know, to about half the speed that these crazy fast ones are printed at. So this I think is actually the most fascinating one because it took, one hour and 13 minutes. So almost the same time as the crazy fast one, but visually it is so much closer to the stock one. In fact, if you wouldn't have the side by side comparison, I think this would pass as a decent print, like not a false one, but a very decent one. This is a profile that maybe with some more tuning, I would actually be comfortable printing with as my default profile. So let's move on to the drilled nozzles. And this is the fun part. And of course, the first nozzle I tried is the 1.5 millimeter one. And yeah, this one didn't quite work. And the problem with this huge 1.5 millimeter nozzle is I think two different things. First of all, you're getting so much flow rate that even at like 250 degrees on the nozzle for PLA, which is crazy hot, um, I don't think it's heating the filament thoroughly. You're getting a lot of blobbing and some, you know, periodic artifacting where it lays down more filament and then oozes and then lays down some more and then just oozes. This is not controllable. And also because the nozzle geometry is so rough, it just has this sharp edge that maybe you could sand down to give it a bit of a, a flat ridge. But this nozzle geometry just does not create nice tracks. You know, if you look at a stock nozzle, then it always has this flat area around the nozzle, which is there to make sure that the filament is nicely smooshed down. Um, these drilled out nozzles do not have that anymore. And with the 1.5 millimeter one, that was just a bit too extreme to use. But the one that was actually usable is the one millimeter one. And the first time I tried to install it, well, these were cheap nozzles. Um, they were like a dollar for a five pack or something. So I wasn't really expecting much, but 
This thing sheared with almost no force applied to it at all. And yeah, having to replace a heater block, a heat break, and then the thermistor that you broke while disassembling everything during a project is not a lot of fun. So cheap nozzles, fun to experiment with, but you should know what you're getting yourself into. But back to the one millimeter prints, and these actually worked out surprisingly well. So on the first one that I did, the first thing that he mentioned is it's actually quite heavy compared to the 0.4 millimeter one. And that's because, well, two perimeters with a 0.4 millimeter nozzle is a whole lot less material than those same two perimeters now that you're laying down a track that is over twice as wide. And the same thing goes for layer height. Three solid layers or four solid layers is a lot more material if your layer height is a lot higher. So this was actually the point where I started running into extruder and hardened limitations. These were printed with 250 degrees Celsius on the nozzle and even though the prints are still matte in some places, which means that we could have used a bit more temperature, the smell that this hardened was giving off was almost unbearable. Like you could just smell how many particles this thing was giving off. So without upgrading to a volcano heater block, this was just the limit of what the hardened could heat. The extruder was still keeping up, pretty much flawlessly, but the hardened was just struggling to put more heat into the filament. So the 0.5 millimeter layer height really didn't make a lot of sense if I was struggling to heat filament and I had to reduce my extrusion rate anyways. So I stepped it down to a 0.4 millimeter layer height, um, adjusted speeds and temperatures and all that, and now we have a print that actually looks good. And this one took 38 minutes, down from the stock two hours and 52 minutes. So that is quite a dramatic improvement. And yes, the layers are thicker, that's for sure. But it is still a nice looking print. And you know, while detailed prints like these do lose quite a bit of resolution, prints like these where you just have some geometry that you want to show off, these actually profit from thicker layers quite a bit. And yes, there is that layer skip in there I reached in and you know, stuff happened. Now what you can still see with this print is that the top solid surface is horrible. Like this is super rough. And again, that is because of the very pointy, very sharp nozzle tip. If this was sanded a bit flat or even, you know, with a bit of sandpaper on the bed and then moving the nozzle across on the printer, this will be a lot better. This type of a model is also the type of design where you're gonna see the biggest advantage for using a larger nozzle, because this is all material. This is 100% infill, and with the thicker lays, you don't get that much of a visual downgrade either. So just to compare, this one printed at 100% infill and 0.4 millimeter layer height with a one millimeter nozzle took one hour and 22 minutes. Even with the tuned compromise setting that gives me good print quality, but also much faster printing on regular models, this still would have taken six hours according to the slicer. And those estimates usually are a bit lower than what it's actually gonna take. And with the stock 0.2 millimeter speed setting, it would have been nine hours just for the pot. So that means this pot with the drilled out nozzle and a slightly tweaked profile prints six times faster than the 0.2 millimeter stock speed profile and still four times faster than the you know massively tuned compromise setting with the stock hardware. This is where you really see the big nozzle shine. With the same profiles on a you know more realistic model you still get a 2x improvement in print speed with the thicker nozzle versus the tuned compromise profile but of course you also lose a lot more detail there. But still that is quite a bit of time saving since the larger nozzle print was twice as fast as the optimized one which was twice as fast as the stock profile. And that's a perfect time to quickly talk about today's sponsor Skillshare. Are you looking to get a head start into learning something new or are simply looking for something useful to do with your newfound time? Well, Skillshare is an online learning community. So when you're looking to start working on a new skill, you've got a huge number of classes to guide you through that learning process. You can take the classes at your own pace, whether that's just squeezing in a single lesson in your lunch break or just trying out everything and taking a dozen classes over a couple of days. Once this studio move is done, I hope I can finally start working on giving the channel a makeover to get it away from it just being the my name channel and having a proper logo and graphics. So I've been taking a bunch of classes on logo design on Skillshare and because I'm a fan of geometric, perfectly arranged shapes, I've really enjoyed the logo design with grids, timeless styles from Simple Shapes course by George Bohua. Of course, they've got courses on pretty much everything from cooking to CAD. And if you want to try it out, Skillshare are giving away two free months of premium membership to the first 1000 people who click the link in the description box below to help you explore your creativity. After that, it's only about 10 bucks a month. 
Thanks, Skillshare. So I think for taking the best of all these different approaches, something like a 0.5 or a 0.6 millimeter nozzle and a highly tuned profile that then slows down for perimeters and all the visible features, that could really speed up printing and still give you pretty good results. It's surprising to me that the hardware on the Mark III just kept up no issues. Like I was not having issues with the extruder not being able to keep up or skip steps on the X, Y axis, but I think that is not exclusive to the Mark III. Other printers surely could use a bit of tuning, at least on the non-visible parts, just to speed up printing a bit. I'm one who will always prefer a print that comes out great the first time versus one that finishes fast but is not usable. So my focus on tuning these profiles is gonna be how well does the finished part look and fit and is it still accurate? But of course your priorities might be different. I think I'll keep working on this compromise profile a bit more and then that's gonna be my default profile for just you know quickly printing stuff without having to wait twice as long as you have to be. So if you liked the video, give it a thumbs up and share it with people you think that could learn something from this. If you wanna see more videos like this one, get subscribed. I've got a video coming up on doing some tuning on resin printers. And yeah, if you wanna help keep this channel going, you can do so on Patreon or here on YouTube through YouTube memberships. So thanks for watching, keep on making, and we'll see you in the next one.